Right, welcome back. Today we are going through lesson 6.3, which is all about polynomial function and their graphs. So this is kind of an exploratory lesson, so I would encourage you to pause the video and fill this site out and then come back in a few minutes once you've done that and kind of check your work with me. So um, on this first part, we're sketching the graphs of each polynomial, and then we're trying to figure out kind of some key features about it. So it's end behavior, it's leading coefficient, and the degree. And then we're going to use that to determine some things about general polynomials as we go through. So um, the first equation is x squared, so we should know that an x squared graph is that u-shaped parabola, something like that. And when we look at that function, we can see that the end behavior, the left side of the graph, is pointing upward. So that means that it's going upwards towards infinity. And the right side is also pointing upwards, which means it's also going up to infinity. And then if we look at some other key features of the equation in the graph, we have the leading coefficient, which in this case is just a 1 out here in front. So it is positive. We don't really care what number it is. We just care about whether it's positive or negative. And then if we look at the degree, remember the degree is the highest exponent. So this one only has squared as its exponent. And so that is an even degree. So that's a generic x squared function. All right, then we have an x cubed function. So an x cubed function looks something like this. And in x cubed, we can see that the left side is pointing downwards towards negative infinity, and the right side is pointing upwards, or going upwards to infinity. On this one, our leading coefficient is again positive. It would be a 1. And our degree on this one is third degree, so that would be an odd degree polynomial. Okay, next up we have x to the fourth, and an x to the fourth graph looks very similar to an x cubed graph, or sorry, an x squared graph. So it looks like that parabola shape again. The left side is pointing upwards towards infinity, the right side is pointing upwards as well towards infinity. And this one, the leading coefficient, is again positive, so all of these have been positive so far. And the degree on this one is 4, so it is even as well. All right, now we have a bigger polynomial with three terms in it. This one is 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. So if you graph that, it looks something like that. And on this one, we can see that the left side is pointing downwards towards negative infinity. The right side is pointing upwards towards infinity. And on this one, our leading coefficient is a 2, so that is positive. And our degree is third degree, which is odd. All right, so that's our first row. Second row down here. We start to get into some slightly more complicated ones. So on this one, we again have an x to the fourth, but this time it's negative x to the fourth. So if you graph that, negative x to the fourth looks like an upside down U shape. So our left side is now pointing downwards, and our right side is also pointing downwards towards negative infinity on that one. Our leading coefficient on this one is a negative out in front. And our degree on this one is fourth degree, which is so that's negative x to the fourth. Next up we have a negative x cubed. So negative x cubed starts up high here and then comes downward. So this one, the left side is pointing upwards, the right side is pointing downwards towards negative infinity. And again, we have a negative out in front, so that is a negative leading coefficient. And the degree on this one is 3, so it is odd degree. 
All right, next up we have a negative x to the fifth. So if we graph negative x to the fifth, it looks similar to that one we just did. So it looks something like that. With negative x to the fifth, we can see the left side is pointing upwards towards infinity, and the right side is again pointing downwards towards negative infinity. This one, there's a negative out in front, so it has a negative leading coefficient. And it's fifth degree, which is also the final one. We have negative 3x to the fourth minus 2x plus 5, which looks something like that. And we can see on this one, both ends, the left and the right, are pointing downwards towards negative infinity. And our leading coefficient out in front is negative. And our degree on this one is fourth degree, which is even. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use some of that information that we've talked about with these different graphs as we kind of zoom out and look at all of them at the same time. And we're gonna to start to kind of notice some trends that are going on. So if you notice on this one, the top row of graphs that we did, those are all positive leading coefficient. And the bottom row is all negative leading coefficient. And then you can kind of see um, which ones are even degree and which ones are odd degree. We're going to kind of loop those together here. So in part B, we're going to start with this top part. So we're going to talk about the end behavior and some trends in that end behavior. The end behavior of a polynomial relies on two pieces of our equation. It relies on a value which is that leading coefficient, and it relies on the n value, which is the degree. So we are gonna look at what happens when a is positive versus when a is negative, and we're gonna look at when the degree is even versus when the degree is odd. So we're gonna use those graphs that we did on the front page and notice some trends that are going on here. On this one, we, um, we're going to start in the top left. So we need an example function of something where a is positive and n, the degree, is even. So I'm going to start with kind of a basic one, y equals x squared. So that's even degree. Leading coefficient is positive. If you remember on this one, the n's both pointed upwards. So on our graphs on the front page, we had y equals x squared. We also had y equals x to the fourth that was even and positive. And both of those, the ends are both going upwards. So they're both going to positive infinity. All right, so then we have the same degree even, but now we want a negative leading coefficient. So an example of that might just be y equals negative x squared. And on our front page that we did, when we had an even degree with a negative coefficient, we had negative x to the fourth, and we also had negative 3x to the fourth. So if we think about those two graphs, both ends were pointing downward on that. So that means that both ends are going towards a negative infinity. So what we want to notice there is that when the degree is even, the ends are both pointing the same direction. Both ends up or both ends down, depending on the leading coefficient. All right, so then let's talk about what happens when we have odd degree. So an odd degree example might be just x cubed, which we did on the front. And with x cubed, we saw that the right side was going up and the left side was pointing down. So if we look at that, when x is going to negative infinity, that left side, the ends are going down. And when we look at the right side, when x is going towards positive infinity, the function is going upwards towards positive infinity as well. So when it's odd degree, that's when the ends are going opposite directions. All right, and then our last um, end behavior that I wanna make sure we understand is when the degree is still odd, but now we have a negative leading coefficient. So that would be like negative x to the third. So what that does is it reverses what was happening with a positive coefficient. And so now my left side's going up, my right side is going down. And again, remember this is for any odd degree with a negative leading coefficient. 
So it could be x to the fifth, x to the seventh, anything with a negative out in front and an odd degree. So on this one, my left side is now going upwards and my right side is going downwards towards negative infinity. So this helps us to maybe not have to be able to graph every equation, but we can just notice the degree and the leading coefficient and then use that to find it. So that's what we're gonna practice down here. So again, I would encourage you to pause the video and try these six problems and see if you can figure out that um, leading, or that, see if you can figure out that end behavior and then come back and check your work. All right, so for each of these problems, we are looking at the degree and then we are looking at that leading coefficient to see what's going on there. So in this one, we have even degree. Remember, even means they're both pointing in the same direction and positive leading coefficient tells me they're both going upward. All right, let's look at number two here. So this one is third degree or odd degree with a negative leading coefficient. So third degree tells me the ends are going opposite and negative means that that left side is going upward and the right side is going downwards. All right, next up we have fourth degree, which is even, tells me the ends are both going the same direction and we have a negative five out in front. So that tells me that both my ends are pointing downward because it's a negative leading coefficient. Okay, on this next one, we have fifth degree. So odd, meaning they're going opposite directions, positive leading coefficient. So that means my left side is going downwards to negative infinity. My right side is going upwards towards positive infinity. Number five, we have second degree with a leading coefficient of negative one. So even degree, they're both pointing in the same direction. Negative means they're both pointing downward towards negative infinity. And then last example of end behavior here, odd degree seven and a negative leading coefficient there tells me that my left side is gonna point upward towards positive infinity and my right side is going downwards towards negative infinity. So that's how we find n behavior from just the equation, just looking at those two key points of that. So we are gonna look at a graph of a polynomial now and determine some key features on it. So I'm gonna zoom out so we can kind of see all of it at once. I know it's a little bit small, but we can kind of see what's going on here. So we are going to look at this graph down below and kind of find some key features. And then we're gonna use that graph to kind of color code what's going on. So the first thing we are looking at is what's called the local maximum. So the local maximums are the highest points on a graph in any given area. So local maximums are any of the high points on the graph. So on this graph, these two high points are my local maximum. So if I find the coordinates of those, the one on the right is at three, three. And the one on the left is at negative, looks like about negative three and a half and up two. So those are my local max. The local minimum, would be kind of the opposite of that, if you will. So those are the lowest points on any given area. So these are your points that are down low. They are not the arrows on the end, though. Those do not re represent points. They represent that it goes down forever. So it's just the point there. So that local minimum in this case looks to be at about negative 0.5 and down about negative three and a half, I would say. So those are our local maximums, or minimums. Those are our local minimums. All right, then we have something called the absolute maximum. So this is the highest point on the graph, okay? So this one, we are solely looking at which of these maximums that were local that we talked about before that is truly the highest. So that would be the one on the right. So our absolute maximum, our absolute highest point is three, three. Local are the ones of any high point on the graph. 
and then where it changes from increasing to decreasing, and then our absolute is the highest point on the graph. Absolute minimum, so that would be the lowest point on the entire graph. And in this one, we notice that our ends are going downwards. So since our ends are going downwards, it never stops going down. It doesn't have an absolute minimum. So we would say there is none because our ends are going down forever in both directions, there is no absolute minimum. And the same thing can happen with those absolute maximums. If our ends were pointing upward, there would be no absolute maximum because it goes on forever. All right, the next points that it wants us to find are the x-intercepts. So remember, that's the points where it crosses the x-axis. So we have a few of those here. We have four total x-intercepts, so we're going to list those out. They're at negative 5, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, 0, and 5, 0. So those are our x-intercepts. Next up, we have the y-intercept, so that's the point where it crosses the y-axis. So I'm going to look down here for my y-intercept. And that point is at 0, negative 3. All right, next we have intervals. So that's going to be a chunk of the graph, not just one point, but it's an interval of increase. So when we are looking at these intervals, we're going to use interval notation to write them with what x values it's increasing. So the way I think about this is I always start on my left-hand side of the graph, and the interval where it's increasing is where my finger is moving upward. So all the way up to there. Then it goes down, so that's not increasing. When I get to a minimum, now it starts increasing again. And then it flips and goes back downwards. So the increasing is where it's going upward as we move from left to right. So those intervals, were again, we're just listing the x values in interval notation. So all the way on the left-hand side is negative infinity. And then it stops increasing here at about negative three and a half, where that point is. And then it increases again from negative 0.5 up to that maximum point that's at three. So again, those are the x values where it's increasing. All right, now we're going to do the decreasing intervals. So these are the intervals where it's switching from a maximum and going downwards till, or sorry, from a maximum down to a minimum. So once it gets to that minimum, it stops. And then we get to another maximum and it starts decreasing again. So those red intervals that we just did, that is kind of the in-betweens of the increasing. So it starts at negative three and a half and it comes all the way down to that minimum point, which is at negative a half. So that's that in-between that was missing out of those increasing intervals. And then it starts decreasing again at three and continues decreasing forever. It's on forever there. All right, and then the last thing we're going to talk about today is the number of turning points. So turning points are where it switches from increasing to decreasing and then back to increasing. So each of those key points. So we have, um, basically you're counting the maximums and minimums, the local maximums and minimums. So we've got a high point right here, a low point right there, and a high point right there. So those are my three turning points. So I'll label those on there just so we know what they represent. So those are all the key things we need to be able to find from a polynomial graph. Now that we kind of know that information, we want to focus on some other key things or some key features of polynomial graphs. So based on what we're looking at here, are polynomials continuous or discrete functions? So if we look at this graph, it's continuous. It never stops. It doesn't have any breaks in it, so it is continuous. Then it asks, is the leading coefficient of this 
polynomial that we see graphed positive or negative. So we don't have the equation to look at. We just have to look at the end behavior. Both ends are pointing down. So if you think back to our table on the last page, that means that the leading coefficient is negative. And since they're both going the same direction, for C, that tells me that the degree is even. All right, those are all the key features of the graphs of polynomials. We'll see you next time.